Hey guys, my name is Stephanie and today we are going to be analyzing a video on how to do a chess pass in playing basketball. Let's get started. Alright guys, I'm here with Mr. 540, my name is Swoop, and we're going to talk to you guys about great passing and great types of passes, okay? Now, in order to be a great teammate, you always want to make sure you're a great passer, alright? Because you want to make sure you can get the ball to your teammate in the right position where they can score, maybe they can dribble, or maybe they can shoot, right? So, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about our first pass today, and that's called the chess pass, alright? Now, with every pass, you want to have some fundamentals, okay? First thing I want want to do is I want to make sure I'm squared in my triple threat position, all right? That means that I'm my, my feet are squared around shoulder length apart. I'm looking at my teammate. I'm crouched down, um, able to shoot the ball, dribble the ball, or pass the ball. Okay, so what he just described is something called triple threat. So triple threat is when you are standing in a position where you are ready to shoot the ball, pass the ball, or pivot. Now, as you can see, he's getting ready to pass the ball, meaning that his feet are shoulder width apart, his knees are bent, and his hands are soon to be in a 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock position. Now, when I'm passing the ball to my teammate, I want to extend my arms. Extending my arms. Okay, so as you can see here, he is extending his arms, and he wants to spread his fingers as far out as possible, making sure that his thumbs are underneath the ball when he passes it. Thumbs down, thumbs down, releasing the ball so I can pass the ball to the target area, which is right here. So he can do the same, shoot, pass, and dribble. So the target area for the thrower is the receiver's chest area because when he, when he catches it in that area, then he'll be ready to be in a triple, triple threat position, meaning he can either shoot the ball, um, pass it, or pivot. All right, I step, extend. Okay. So as you can see here, this is his finishing stand. He stepped with his right foot and he extended his arms all the way out. As you can see with his hands, his thumbs are facing downwards and his fingers are pointed towards the target, which is the receiver's chest area. When the receiver caught it, his hands are in the 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock position, so he's ready to either shoot the ball, pass the ball, or pivot. And it landed in the chest area. Pass. A great pass, step, extend, and pass. Now, when you want to make sure you pass that ball, you want to make sure you pass it into the target area. This is not a good pass. That is not a good pass. Now, the reason that that is not a good pass is because... He did not aim for the receiver's chest area. He threw it at his feet. So there are many common errors when doing a chest pass. Now, the first one is when the ball does not make it to the receiver. That means that there needs to be more strength when throwing the ball. The second one is when the thumbs are not pointed downwards after the release. That means that you need to adjust your hand movement in order to have your thumbs pointing downwards after the release. And finally, the example here, the third one is when the pass does not go to the receiver's chest. It's not a good pass, all right? This is not a good pass. We want to make sure... And that one, he lobbed it over the receiver's head, which means that he couldn't, the receiver could not catch it in the chest area. So you hit him right between the numbers, step, pass, and that's how you execute a chest pass. All right, thank you guys for watching so much. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.